Hi guys, how are you today? My name is Sheila Landry from Toe Painting Designs and today's video is going to be showing you how to paint the background mainly for my new little snail pattern. Now this guy is called Rambles and he's a new snail from my new line of patterns that I'm calling Snail Trails. I started doing him for um, Toll Town, the online painting community. I have a link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And this is for my September of 2022 online class. And I like to show the parts that are a little bit different to do. So I'm going to show how to do the forested background. But first I wanted to show you um, my new line of patterns. Like I said, I'm calling them snail trails as a whole. But um, there's going to be different divisions of them. Like this will be harvest trails because it's going to be like an autumn, fall theme. And what I did before I published this is I created 10 different fun snails for Halloween that I'm calling haunted trails. So these 10 patterns are all going to be on my website by the time you see this. I'm going to sell them individually, very reasonably priced, so you can pick your favorites. You don't have to buy them all, because um, those of you who get my patterns know that they're pretty um, comprehensive, and it would be like a book if I put them all in one. So I'm going to let you pick and choose on them and I'm gonna have different sizes of line work with them so you can put them on any surface you want they don't have to have specialized cut surfaces now I used my pumpkins um, these are pumpkin ornaments that are available on my toll painting design site and this first set of 10 are the Halloween themed ones so this is Edna the witch this is whip stitch the mummy. This is Maisie because she's candy corn so I thought Maze is like corn. This is Shadow. This snail has a kitty um, costume with two little mice on it. This is Mist the ghost. This guy is Sparky. He's a little Frankenstein snail. You could tell I had fun with these. I just started drawing and I, I I could still go on with the Halloween but I stopped at 10. I'll probably have more for next year if you guys like these. This little guy is Cosmos. He has a crystal ball with a candle. This is Lucy as in Lucifer. She's our little devil snail. This is Sprinkles because he's got lots of different candy and fun. And the dragon I'm calling Stanley. Don't ask me why. My grandpa's name was Stanley, and he was not a dragon. He was a very nice man. I loved him very much, but this guy looked like a Stanley to me. So anyway, this is a lot of fun. Um, I've been really kind of holding these close to my chest and not showing them until they were done, but I was so excited. It was so hard to do to not show anybody. But um, I used the beautiful deco art paints with these, and some of them have the new colors in them too. But if you don't have the new colors, don't worry, because I'm putting color charts in all my design um, swatch charts. So you can do um, similar colors, and that will be easy to follow. And, you know, just use what you have on hand if, if you can't get your hands on the new colors yet, and they'll look just as adorable. And you could see I used some of their specialty paints too, like the, um, the glitter paints on them for the backgrounds. And I kept the backgrounds pretty simple because I really wanted these to be something that's fun that just about everybody could do. But you could see they're all sparkly and fun and nice. So anyway, we're going to start working on our rambles. Um, I'll clear this away and then I will be right back with the process on that. If you're on Toll Town, you will like to, um, you, you can see that. And after the month of September, I'll have this on my regular YouTube channel. Okay, so hang on and I will be back in a second.
All right, I guess we're going to be ready to start. As I said in the introduction, um, we're going to be painting the background. I'm going to show you how to do this. Now this is done on my small square beveled plaque that's available on my site. It's a two-piece, I didn't glue my piece yet, it's a two-piece um, surface and the frame part is cut on a bevel. There was a small hole that I drilled to get the blade in and then when you set this in it pushes back and it gives a self-framing effect and I have a lot of these self-framed ornaments or bevel cut ornaments and plaques and things like that on my site. They're very popular and there's something really nice that um, because you get the frame and the piece all in one. And this is SLDPK867, I think, on the site. So if you want to get that, you could go over to tollpaintingdesigns.com and get that. Or you can put this on a basket or a platter or plate or anything you want or canvas. Now, since my pieces are of MDF, what I use to prep it, I get asked a lot about how I prep my MDF and there's several ways to do it. A lot of times I'll just put a couple coats of buttermilk um, or a neutral paint. It doesn't have to be buttermilk. It could be like, I don't know, light ivory or light buttermilk. Or I don't like to put white usually because white is very stark. Um, you could do black if you want. And I put one or two coats and what it does is it raises the um, the fibers in the MDF a little bit and then you take a real fine grain sandpaper and knock down those fibers to get a nice smooth surface and sometimes you have to put a second coat on um, and then it helps with your base coat it helps your colors come out true because if you could see this is the color of the MDF so it's a little bit darker and murkier and it tends to dull the colors. It, they don't look as bright and nice. So I like to put, you know, a lighter color that's acrylic. And what I used that I really like lately is the DecoArt Chalky Gesso. And this is the beige. And as you can see, it's very close to the color of the buttermilk. So it, it worked out beautifully. It gave a real nice surface. And what I'm doing with this piece, usually I'll pull out the center and paint that and then paint the frame differently. But since the design travels out onto the frame, I'm going to not um, glue the pieces yet, but just leave them set in each other like this. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this the whole time. And I'm not going to worry about the edges because those will be done last. They're done with a darker color, both the inside edge here. You don't paint this edge ever because if you put too much paint on these edges, um, they don't want to fit in as nicely if you build up paint or get a ridge or that. So um, you don't worry about the edges at this point. You know, later on, after they're glued, what I do is I paint my backs and then this little, you know, there's about an eighth of an inch sticking out here in the back and I paint it all at once and it looks great. So you don't even have to paint this edge at all. Okay, so we have our piece prepped. Um, that was, like I said, it was one coat and then I took a fine sandpaper and knocked it down. It looked pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by um, glazing the background, which a glaze is like a thinned paint a little bit. What I'm using for my glazing is saffron yellow because it's a transparent color. Transparent colors work great for glazing, and they're good for like toning without making it blocked in is thick with paint. So I put a little bit on my palette. Um, this is just the inside lid of my Masterson's um, wet palette. I use the wet palette for details, but when I'm doing backgrounds and stuff, I'll use the lid as just a palette because it doesn't really matter and it doesn't waste as much paint. So I'm going to um, take a larger brush 
and water, clean water. Dampen my brush. And let's get a paper towel and blot it a little bit. And just load it up lightly. And you can see on the palette that this is quite a transparent color. And I'm going to be starting and stopping the video quite a bit because um, we have to let these layers dry. And you can see it's kind of absorbing in right away because it's not really sealed. Um, you know, there's debates on whether you want to seal stuff or not. And, you know, as long as you seal it at the end, the acrylic paint, works as a sealer as you apply the layers. So these first layers might absorb a little more, but um, I don't feel the need to seal it. Now you don't have to be neat with this. We're going to do some sponging with it. You can see I'm just letting like a lighter color through, like putting a sheer, sheer layer on it. Okay. And I'm not worrying about the edges, any of the edges. And I kind of want to go in the direction of side to side for this. Okay, you don't want it really up and down. So it doesn't have to be perfect, as you can see. So that is about where I would like it, just to tone the back. And I'm going to stop there. Okay, and we're going to let this dry, and I'll be back in a minute. So I waited a little bit, and everything is dry. You could also use a hair dryer with these steps if you want, but um, yeah, I'm not going to do that either to show you, because you don't need to watch me do a hair dryer. So what I did is I loaded my palette with some nice warm autumn colors. What we have here is Spiced Pumpkin and this one is Burnt Orange. It's a little deeper orange. Elysian Crimson is a red, red tone. Um, cinnamon Stick is a medium brown. Raw Sienna is like a little bit more of a tan brown and Asphaltum is a nice darker transparent color. And uh, as I said, we're going to have color swatches on there. We could also put a little more of the saffron, I think, on the palette. Just a bit. Now, what I am going to do to start this off is give a horizon line where the little hill is. Because it will give us kind of a starting point. Um, I think I'll just have some sketches in the pattern. I didn't do the final line work on the background yet for the pattern, but um, I'll have some sketches for that. I'm not going to put in every tree though because it's silly. And what I have is some water and I'm going to take a medium size angle shader. This is a half inch and I'm going to just pick up a little bit of that asphaltum with a damp wet brush and then kind of tap it on my paper towel so it doesn't have too much water in it. Now remember this is going to be, um, still it's going to absorb a lot of the paint. So I'm going to turn it on its side and kind of, just kind of do a hill. It doesn't have to be fancy but it'll kind of give us, you know, a starting point. And we're going towards the top of the design with this. Okay. And you could see by just wetting, for those of you who don't know how to float shade, I like using angle brushes. Um, some people use flats, but I feel more comfortable with an angle. Whatever f feels best for you is, you know, the way you should go. And you just tap, pick up a corner of the paint, and then you brush it back and forth on the palette with a wet brush or damp brush I should say. You don't want your brush too wet and that blends it out and you could see it's like a wicking effect. You get a lot of paint on one side and it fades off. 
see and it it's it gives you a nice um, even shade it takes a little practice but it works so you dampen the brush I absorb some of the water off of it put the corner in kind of blend it up a little maybe about halfway and then you can paint on your surface you could also add more water in if you need to blend it out a little bit like that like I said if you get little chunky areas you know you don't have to do it all in one um, stroke you go back pick up more paint if you need more you can deepen it like that okay so there's our horizon line I guess you'd call it the horizon line and that'll just give us an area to put the trees behind I guess and then we're gonna have the big tree here so I'm gonna just put a little hill there and under the snail we'll work on that later you know and just kind of leave that to dry for a minute and you could see if there's a water line there you can blend it in but there's going to be so many trees that's why this is fun to work on like this as maybe a first piece because nothing is going to show up by the time we're done with it it'll kind of just give us a starting point for everything so that's about that and we'll put away our angle brush and I am going to choose I should have my brush out a longer lining brush now this is a monogram liner it's a um, number four and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the raw sienna paint and I'm gonna make it a little bit wet like an inky texture okay and what I'm gonna be painting with this is some of these little trees in the back these very whispers of trees to give it some depth so you're just going to drag your brush and start pulling up lines with it it's going to look crappy now you know it'll look like a four-year-old did it but that's kind of the way it's going to be and you want to you could put it sideways which is really the better way to go you wanted some light trees these are the ones that are going to kind of fade in the background so you're going to start at the horizon line you know and just start pulling out little branches fill them in you could do some up here doesn't have to be fancy you don't want too much paint you don't want it like a watery puddle but you don't want it um, thick either you want it almost inky okay so just kind of skip it across the surface these are your background trees okay and we'll put some couple bushes here a couple on down here because it's a forest so nothing needs rhyme or reason remember that you don't want as many in the front area though we're gonna have like a little bit of a clearing that he's cruising through so I want to keep that a little bit less but you still want to have some stuff there so how's that for fancy fancy okay so I'm gonna let that dry a second and then I'll be back in a minute okay the initial background trees are all dry so the next step we're gonna do is kind of put some washes of the color on the background and this is really kind of random we're just gonna do go lighter to dark and we're gonna try to just you know 
um, fill in where we think like the tree will be here and the snail we're going to do the shadow last so that we don't have to worry about yet but um, you know make make it look a little interesting like a forest so I'm back to my palette here and once again I am going to take I don't know a smaller wash brush this is a half inch flat brush and I'm going to dip it in my water. My clean water's off the camera to the side. And I'm just going to start to pick up little bits of color here. I don't want it too thick. See how I'm making it like soupy almost. And I'm going to kind of just slip slap it. Or see how it's transparent and you could see through it. And tone it again. You could see how this is kind of toning down. We're using more water than paint on this because we want to give it a soft look. You know, there will be areas that will be lighter in the forest, like you could leave that lighter. You don't have to cover the whole area. Um, the color that I picked up was cinnamon stick. Yes, cinnamon stick. And what I'm doing is making it like a little path here because our snail's going to be here. So we'll kind of make it very random. There's no like artistic ability needed to do this. The big tree is going to be here on the side. So we'll do a little bit by the bottom. We don't want harsh lines really. So if you see them coming up, you can kind of just wet them down. Now you don't have to let that dry. You could go to the next color, a darker color. And this one is burnt orange that I'm picking up now. And I'm going to kind of just slip slap that around. You know, it depends how brilliant you want your colors, if you want them more orangey or, you know, more subdued, you want more of the dark colors. Now you see this still looks pretty yellow, but it'll come along with layers. You know, that's a trick, and we're, we're using very light pressure right now because we don't want to have to um, pull off the paint that we put on before. So I'm going to use those two colors and what I'm going to do again is just let it dry. This is a real short little clip. Like I said, it's a lot of short steps. So I'm going to let it dry with those two colors on and then I will be right back again. Okay? Okay, I think that's dry enough. Now the next thing we're going to do is start building up the little like leaves. And by that, instead of doing a wash, what I'm going to use is like a stencil brush or a deer foot brush you could use. Um, I'm looking through my brushes. I don't have a big deer foot brush, so I'm going to probably use a stencil brush like this. And again, we're still going to be going with a little bit of water on the brush so I'm dipping it in the water I don't know if you need to see that and then I'm going to blot it a little bit on a paper towel and I'm going to start picking up the darker colors a little bit so I'm going to go with a little bit of the Elysian Crimson and I'm going to remove some of it from the um, with the paper towel and then just start putting it in random. Now you don't want it too dark. See how it came in pretty strong. So I'm going to wipe some more off. And there we go. We're going to kind of make leaves, right? I'm going to go towards the edges more. This is just one load on the brush, so you can see it goes kind of far. And I don't want it all in the same place, and I don't really want it to look like clumps. So I'm trying to like put it on its side and fill it in a little. 
bring it down here you know leaves fall on the floor of the forest too there we go you want it light like this so you could build on it so you want it I'm, I keep move just wiping it on the paper towel and I'm trying not to get a pattern in here you know I'm trying to um, make it look random a little bit here I can move that off of there there you go and kind of almost like a tap and drag on it to soften it okay your snail's gonna be here so that's not gonna matter too much but I don't want it to look like a dot pattern so while that is wet I'm gonna just fold over my paper towel dip my brush in and kind of dry it off a little bit and then I'm going to pick up some of the asphaltum, which is a dark brown, and start working on that and filling it in. And see how I'm allowing the trees, you can see the trees through it. And there's enough water in it so it doesn't look really um, like it's going to cover. It's more like a wash again. And it's going to kind of tone this down again. And if you feel more comfortable um, washing it on like we did the last step, the first two colors, you could do that. You can kind of drag. You could use this brush to drag. kind of going to feel your way through it and when I pick up more paint I'm only going to pick up not from the pile but from what I dragged over there because I don't want to put too much on but I still want it to look like leaves okay and see how it's gradually filling in darker this doesn't happen quickly. That's kind of why I wanted to do a video on it, even though it's rather a simple procedure. Um, it's all about building layers. See, I'm just getting pulling a little bit of the paint, and then I want to get out of there and kind of spread it around. So I'm not having too much on my brush at once. And I want to go a little darker on the upper side of the hill and on the edges. And then in the forest floor, I'm going to make like a couple little pathways, you know. Um, this is where the tree comes in on this side, so that can be darker. And same down here. And it's kind of blending with the colors. It looks a little muddy, but it's a forest floor, so that's okay. And you don't want to over blend it, but you don't want it to look too splotchy either at this point. Like you want to have little areas of light that come in so it's like the sun coming in through the trees a little. Not that there's sun though, this is a pretty dark forest, but moonlight we'll say. How's that? And a little darker because the trees are going to be here and that's going to lead into where the snail is. Okay. So before I turn it to mud, I'm going to let it dry one more time. Okay, so that's with two more layers of color on. I used the um, cinnamon stick and I used the asphaltum on this layer. Okay, 
So I'm going to wait and let it dry, and then I will be right back. Okay, now that everything is all dry, what we need to do is to put more trees in the back. As you see, they got faded in a little bit. And this time I'm going to go with first asphalt them. And I'm going to once again add some water and use my lining brush. This is a number four, I believe, like a monogram liner, though you could use any brush you're comfortable with. And I'm going to make the paint a little bit inky. You can see it's quite wet. Don't make it too wet. You don't want it to run all over, but you want it to spread. Okay, so I'm going to once again turn my piece a little bit and then just start putting some trees in the foreground more. And some little bushes. And a lot of this will be covered too, so it doesn't have to be, you know, fussy. Use a very light touch. Try not to do um, organized trees. Do a random. I'm bad at random. And when you see it thinning out, grab some more paint. Oops, I didn't get enough. And you could put branches coming in from up on top. This is a very um, loose type of painting, which those of you who know me know I don't do it very often. You kind of want to fill in a little bit of the area there. Because you could still see the old trees in the background there. And there's bushes on the side here. I will show you. They kind of bleed down into the, the ground. So... You see, if you put a little too much water, you're going to get a, um, it'll be very transparent. But by going like down into this area too, you're pulling the whole picture together. These are more foreground trees, and the others are background trees and bushes. So you can see how it's kind of going back it's giving you depth. So not too many. I don't want to go crazy with them. But it is a forest, so you can, you know, add some coming from the top. And see how you have your variation of colors there that looks really nice. And you might want to put some grass. Just random. Okay. And this was asphalt that I'm using. Okay. So let that dry a second and then we'll do the next layer. Okay, I let that set a little bit. Now the next thing I'm going to put in are going to be the two bigger trees. And these are going to be a little darker. And what color I'm going to use for those is going to be um, soft black. So I put some of that on my palette. And I'm going to use an angle shader for that one. This is a 3 8 inch, so it's a little bit thicker. You could use a half or you could even use a quarter inch. And I'm wetting the brush, picking up some of the soft black, and I'm just going to um, freehand this. Now I'll have a sketch in the pattern, but you really don't have to use it. We're going to just pretend it's a tree. Now I'm going over this frame part. And the trunk is, of course, going to be a little bit wider. 
And the color doesn't have to be even because it's a tree, right? So we're going to bring some branches out. I'm using the chisel edge to create some thinner branches, which I will put more um, thinner branches in in a minute with that liner that we used. But just kind of bring some branches out to the end and fill them in. Okay, and then the same thing over here on this side. The tree is kind of coming in from off the page. I thought that would look nicer than having another one planted here. So what I'm, I did is I kind of came in wider and then brought it up. And brought the branches out. Now this looks dark on this, but we're going to add some more darks over it. So it's going to look a little more natural. There you go. And there's no real right or wrong. You know, this kind of just frames it for everybody. It frames it in. It brings us forward here. Go over there. You know, go over this one if you need to and, you know, make some branches that cross in the back. They shouldn't really end blunt, but we'll fix that. I'll put this brush in the water and I'll go back to my liner, pick up some of the soft black, and then start doing these, like, little secondary branches. So if you see blunt edges, you can kind of just go over them and flick Okay, and I am going to paint over these two, so, and again, this is a little bit inky because you want it to flow off your brush. It's not fussy, it's supposed to look like a creepy forest. And see how it goes back a little bit like that? That looks nice. And then what I'm going to do is add some trees using the brush thin. Not too many, but some in the distance. Like on the horizon line, and then we want some these might be bushes here. The snail will be over most of these, so if you're timid about it, you know, you figure he's about there, so you could start there until you feel comfortable. You know, and you want some grass, because when you're in the forest, there's always leaves and grass all over. Now see, I added just a little more water and see the thin amount of color you get. It tones it down a little bit. Okay. So it's starting to look like a good forest. It's looking nice and deep. And once again, we'll let that dry and then I will be right back to you. Okay, this had a chance to dry a little bit. Now the last thing we're going to do, um, we're almost done here. You don't want to do too much. I wanted to have some variations in tone. But I'm going to go back to the stencil brush. And I'm going to wet it again. Or your Deerfoot stippler or whatever brush you used for those leaves. And it's a dirty brush. I didn't clean it out really. I'm going to pick up some of the alizarin crimson and add some of that in for some color. And you can kind of use the side of the brush, as I said, and just put some leaves in to kind of blend in these guys here. And I put some leaves on the floor of the forest, like that.
see how nicely that fills in it's a, and it's pretty wet so it's kind of moving it around which I like I don't really want it to look stippled I would rather have it look a little bit um blurred and by adding a little more water it does that and then I am gonna go with my soft black and I didn't even clean my brush I picked up some soft black the brush is still pretty wet and again I'm gonna add that in on the for forest floor and if you notice it's getting too chunky you could roll the brush to a wetter area and kind of blur it in Again, our snail's going to be in the middle, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But we want a little bit there, though. You know, on the, you don't want a bright area on the hill or the horizon. So I'm going to, I loaded up some um, soft black, and I'm going to go towards the horizon part kind of put some in there. I'm going to stick to my edges too because it's going to make it like a vignette where we're looking into an area. So I'm going to put this soft black like a wash I guess kind of between a stipple and a wash around the edges. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So see how the inside is like highlight, highlighted, highlighted, highlighted. Sorry, a truck went by. We're getting to rush hour traffic here. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. I kind of like it like that. I don't want to do too much, as I said, because I'll, if you keep going, of course you could do it how you like, but if you keep on um, doing too much, you're just going to make it all one color and muddy. And then you lose all your interest with your, you know, little variances here. Like you could see there's still red in the brush. And I'm just kind of muddying up the path a little, but you don't want it too solid. But I like that little bit of red in there. I thought that complemented the colors of the pumpkin that I used to um, highlight and shade. So there we go with that. That part of it's going to be done. And once again, I'm going to ask you to let it dry. A lot of waiting on this one. So it's nice if you're doing a bunch of them. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, we're all dry. And now the last thing I'm going to show you how to do right now is for the beveled frame we're going to work on the, um, the inside edges and that's going to be done in soft black and I'm using a flat brush for that I'm going to take this and move it to the side you'll see my little kitty sticker that keeps me centered um, I'm using a stiffer flat brush this is a silver ruby satin and I like this because it's a little bit stiffer you get a little bit of control you could probably use a deer foot for this but I'm going to use soft black paint and the way I do my edges is I just kind of go perpendicular to the edge and pull it up and kind of cast off okay so you want your a little bit of water in the paint not a lot you don't want it to run but this is a routed edge it's rounded over on this and you don't want to pull the paint onto the surface onto the face of it but you want to cover that routed edge so I'm loading up some paint and then I'm kind of tapping it and see if it goes over like that you could just push with your finger especially with this forced one it's very easy to do you don't have to be fussy and what it will do when your piece is set back is give a nice deep edge to it 
and you can you can put it in like that and see well there was a route mark so I'm gonna need more paint there which I didn't even really get there yet but you can kind of judge like that and you don't want to put thick paint here again because you're gonna be gluing that in that inside piece so you just follow it around I do a lot of my edges like this or I use um, a deer foot brush because they're flat and nice and they um, they don't go over that edge much and you're gonna see like I don't know if you could see that where it's drying it's lightening up and that means that the paint absorbed into the edge because remember I said when we started I didn't put a lot on this inside edge so you you might have to go over a second coat with that because it might dry and, and kind of suck it in but see how it follows that routed edge and I'm almost pushing up towards the top of the neck of the brush in this area because it's very stiff there and see how you can get a pretty even line as I went over and you don't have to go to the bottom but you want to go probably two-thirds down at least because that piece will be pushed in like you could see I didn't make it to the bottom there but it's not going to show because the piece will be in the way okay so that is how we're going to do the edges and then I'll show you how to undercoat for the snail okay we do the outer edges by the way the same way you're gonna this is too close to the camera but you'll use the soft black and just tap along the outer edge while you're at it and that will finish your piece so I can do that off camera though you don't need to watch me do it really and then we'll undercoat for the snail because since it's on such a dark background we'll want to undercoat it with a light color first and then everything will go really nice and smooth okay so hang in there and I will finish this up and be back okay everything here is dry um, I'm sorry for the traffic it's busy out there and there's not much I can do about that but anyway our frame and background is done pretty much and as I said I wanted to really kind of focus on this part of the design because the snail itself is quite easy it's quite straightforward as far as painting and all that and like I said every background will be different like you could see the difference in the first sample I did and this one but that's part of the nice thing about it and you know you could do a little more stippling if you want or more of one color or another it doesn't really matter it gives you the same overall effect and really and truly this is a background so it's not really the focus of the design the focus will be the snail so the next thing that we're gonna do is transfer on the snail and a lot of times in my patterns in fact most of the time I recommend that you print them out on vellum and this is what I mean by vellum it's a sheer um, paper it's a little bit like plastic it's not that real tissuey thin type but it's it's a medium thickness and it will go through most printers now for my printer I put a sheet of regular paper under it so it supports it and sucks it in and prints and I guess you have to fuss or with your printer and see what's gonna work for you but the reason I like doing the pattern on vellum is if you ever have to replace it which a lot of times you know the way I paint is with layers so you want to do the first layer in a solid base and then you put your pattern on over it again but by seeing through it I think you, you're able to see through it you can tell exactly where you are on your piece so even if I have to replace the snail later 
and paint the next layer on it, I'll be able to get it aligned pretty nicely. And you could see I drew some trees in. Now you guys watched me freehand, but I guess that's how close I was to doing things. These were just suggested lines on the side, and you could see here's my background horizon. So you want to kind of position your snail, your pattern to go about there. And I'm using painter's tape, so there's no residue, just a low tack artist type tape with no acid. Um, I get them like six rolls on Amazon. And then for this design, since it's a dark background, darker background, I am going to use light trans transfer paper. So you could probably get away with dark. It's up to you again. And um, what I'm going to do is a trick that my friend Tracy Moore showed me when tracing on the design. I use a very fine point um, pen. This is a Uniball, and I don't know exactly the number of it, but it's a nice fine point. It's not a broad point pen, and that way you could see exactly where you traced on your pattern. So we're going to start to trace the pattern on. And we're going to check it, make sure it's going on. And you can see it, it shows up enough, but not too much. You know, it's not like, it's not going to be something that you won't be able to cover. So I want to trace the pumpkin. And I always check after the first line or two because, you know, I think most of us have done where we've traced the whole design on and then we had the tracing paper upside down and traced it back onto the pattern so you're not alone if you've done that um, so I'm gonna do the sections of the pumpkin I'm a little off but it's a pumpkin so it doesn't matter I want to trace the lamp I know this isn't very exciting. And then our little cute snail. But see how the easy this is? I know exactly what lines I traced. I'm tracing. Oops. See, I moved that over, so I'm going to compensate and move that over. So his, his eyes will look not wonky. Do a smile. His antenna. And now I'm not going to do like these little detail lines that are here. I don't know where I put my other one. Because they're, they're going to be free handed in. They're just a little afterthought. So you don't have to do every line. Because what we're going to wind up doing with this anyway is undercoating it. Oops. So I'm not even going to do this line going down the middle. Because I can kind of freehand that. It's like a quarter inch following that. So as long as the main lines are in, we're good. Okay, so I hope you could see that. You know, I have pretty good light today, so put my pen away. And the next thing I wanted to show you how to do, and that'll be the last thing for the videos, because from that point on, then it's just pretty much straight up painting, you know, as far as base coating and, and shading and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to get my palette, and I put a little um, buttermilk paint on there, which is a nice neutral color, because we're going to undercoat the snail. Because if we don't undercoat him, and I start painting in this orange and his tan, it's going to be a lot of thick, heavy coats 
to cover all this and make it look even. So whenever I have a darker surface like this, um, I find that it's best to do like an undercoating. And that's just a lighter coat of paint. Let me see, I'm going to get the right brush for this. I'll probably use a two or a four flat because some of these areas are small. And let me get my paper towel. Where are we at? Can you see me on screen here? And I have my little water here. This is my clean water. I call this my little water. And I keep a little cup of that on my palette. I don't really rinse my brush. It's for my floating water and when I need clean water on my brush. And then I also have a large water that I rinse my brushes in. So that's my big water. So anyway, I'm going to start with the butter milk paint and you could start on the stem now this doesn't have to cover all the way but just like that even go in the direction that you want um, the design to go in like don't go all over the place with it and what that will do is that'll help you get your shading lines and everything in so we're going to start on the stem, get our footing with that. And because the stem has like striations, you know, I'm going to follow it around. And you could see um, these look like I painted each one in, but I didn't. It was because you see the variation in color. You know, you still get a neutral color, but you get lighter and darker tones of neutral. So it kind of helps you along the way with that. And we're going to pull it to the stem. And then I'm going to show you another little trick that my friend Tracy showed me. And see, I'm using the chisel edge to get these pointy areas of the stem. And even though we're going to use buttermilk for everything, we're going to treat each little section as if it's its own color. Okay, if that makes any sense to you. And I am going to grab my other glasses because I could see better closer with them. So hang on. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. Now the light went on. So when I start to do the segments, what I'm going to do is take that out for you. Get that out of the way because I'm going to turn my piece. I'm going to do each segment and do almost up to the line. But I'm going to leave a little tiny space between the segments. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This is all going to be covered with your colors. But for those guys who um, tune in with Tracy Moore on Saturday, she has a free um, live lesson every Saturday afternoon. And I'm there almost every week. She's been doing it for over two years now since the pandemic started. And we have a really nice group there. And you learn a lot of tricks. I always say that a week doesn't go by when I don't learn something. And Tracy showed how to do this. And it makes a lot of sense. So you don't have to retrace these lines. If I just so made this a solid pumpkin, I'd have to retrace the segment lines, right? And then that's kind of a pain. And once again, I'm, I'm kind of following, following the direction of each segment. When you see a pumpkin... You know, the lines for the pumpkin curve around each segment. And you don't have to leave a lot in between, just a little bit. And see, by pulling these strokes like this, like on the stem, you're getting this striation marks in there from your brush. You could use a round brush. You could use whatever you're comfortable with.
and I don't suggest white for this but a nice neutral you could use buttermilk light buttermilk any of the tans um, I don't know there was a new color almond something that's a nice like a beige and this will really help expedite things see where I'm at if you feel that they're not filled in enough if you're still seeing a lot of the background you can put an extra couple strokes on there all these little things make things really easy for you okay I'm trying to do this quickly because I know the video is quite long and it's just you know it's repetition once you start doing these things you're just doing it over and over again so you know that's why I like cutting in and out I don't feel like you guys you know want to spend two hours watching me and then you know another two hours painting something so simple see the point with that now we're not going to do the lamp because later in the instructions we'll be doing the inside light part first and then just paint over it because this is going to give the appearance of being clear so you don't want to do inside the lamp at all whoops but we will do our the snail too this little antenna you know you could probably use a round with that and it might come out easier. And this head, and the same thing. Now, you don't have to really leave the smile, his little face. It's easy enough to figure out. But then when you, you know, go in the direction of the snail, don't go all over. Follow his, his body shape. Like this. You know, make his head round. And you can see the paint is slightly thinned. I'm not putting it on thick. It's got a bit of water in it. And once again, if you if you feel you want more coverage, if it's too sheer, just go over it with another coat. You know. Fill it in like this. Around the bottom of your pumpkin. turning on your chisel edge when you need to um when you need to get a fine line you know you don't have to use a flat edge you can get in that little space on your chisel edge of your brush that's why I like using flats for these instead of filberts because then you just kind of pull up and get them done okay I'm going to give them a little more coverage and kind of blend it in. And see, there's not a lot of space. So it doesn't, you know, it's not something you have to be overly worried or fussy with, but it gives you a good um, starting point for when you base coat. Okay. And then on the chisel edge for his other little antenna, and just some white. We'll, we'll put those in with dots with the back of our brush or a stylus. And then he should be about ready. Now the, the next thing I want to tell you is to let him dry. As we've been doing, you know, like I said, the, the trick with all these layers is letting them dry because otherwise especially something like this that's a little bit thinner it has a lot of water in it 
so if you don't let it dry you're just going to go over it and pull it off completely and then you'll make a mess and if that happens just let everything dry completely and then go back but see how sheer coats you get a lot of control without getting that gloppiness you know I'm just picking up a little bit of paint my brush is pretty wet and everything shows nicely shaped here okay so I think that I'm gonna end the videos here the rest is in the instruction packet and you can follow through that the rest is just typical base coat shade highlight and you could see like these areas in between will be very easy to shade because there won't be white on them and it'll help you get your values your lights and darks showing up better okay so I hope you enjoyed the videos um, I hope you have fun with the project and put it on you know some fun surfaces or you guys like I said you could get the surface from me and if you look for my other snails they'll be published within a day or two from when you guys when I publish this video it's September 1st right now and I'm finishing up so it'll be in the next day or two everything will be up on my site okay so thank you for watching um, come and visit me for other patterns and my YouTube channel has um, lots of different videos on them too if you like my videos I keep trying I try to make um, the best videos I can I just kind of show you how I do things it might not be how everybody else does but um, thank you for watching and I hope you have fun take care